The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in Good morning. Morning. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Richard Consign and today I'll be walking you through the eWay Business Centre. Now the eWay Business Centre is the administration portal that all eWay merchants have access to and it's really where um, you're able to access all the information about your eWay account, transaction histories and reports, uh, actually processing payments. There's a lot of power within the portal and today we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. So we'll be going through the reporting tools that you have access to, uh, as well as the payment solutions, charts and dashboards, uh, how you control your eWay account through the account settings and users and tools, and also how you can access assistance online through the help desk. Let's get straight into it. So you can access the eWay Business Centre through the eWay website. So securely log in with your username and password. And we'll log into the main page. Now this page gives you a bit of a, an overview of uh, your eWay account. Any news that we have at the moment, we can also see in this main page. So we've got a few, we've got a poll there at the moment and a Google AdWords trial. Um, so if you've got time once you've, uh, once you've logged into the Business Centre, it might be an idea to just have a look at those, uh, those few tips. If we just scroll down, we'll see the transactions for the past 30 days in a graphical format. So this is really to give you a bit more insight into how your business is travelling, uh, where the peaks are for transactions and where the dips are and how you can avoid those dips as well. So it gives you a good overall understanding of, of how your, uh, your business has travelled over the last 30 days. We can also see the overview uh, for this month. So purchases, purchases versus refunds and also failed purchases as well. And we can see the 10 most recent transactions. A lot of the time when you log into the business centre, you want to have a look at um, what went through um, just recently. So this gives you a quick overview of the last 10 transactions on the account. So as you can see, up the top we've got all the, uh, the tabs. Um, so we've really tried to order the information in the business centre by uh, the function that it allows. So uh, reporting payments, account settings, help desk resources. The first one we want to have a look at is the reporting. So we can see a few different report options here. We'll click on the transaction report, which is the main area that you'll access your reports and your transaction history. So we'll see on this first page, um, we've got some search filters up the top. We've once again got a summary report in the middle, and then we've got a breakdown of all the individual transactions uh, for that time span. Now with the search features, you can set it to a uh, preset period. So you might want to look at today's transactions, this month, last month, last uh, four months. Uh, so that's quite easy to do. Or you can set your own time period using the custom uh, calendar. So simply just access that through here. So let's set it back to the first of the month and up until tomorrow, uh, yesterday I should say. We'll hit search. And that will bring back the transactions contained within that time span, counting back from the most recent to the, uh, the earliest. You can also search for keywords within this uh, area. So we might want to search for a, a credit card name by the name of eWay Test. As you can see, the port now only returns uh, transactions that have that keyword contained within them. So if you're searching for an individual customer, uh, it's a lot quicker to search using the, the keyword search, um, search area rather than having to scroll through hundreds um, of transactions to, to try and find the, the correct transaction. So if we just scroll down to the transactions we see in the report, now we've got a quite a few columns um, displayed on this main page. So you can see the date time that it came through, the eWay transaction number, that's a unique number assigned to each transaction, the amount that was processed, the type of transaction, be it purchase, refund, the card name, so the, card, uh, the user's name entered on the card, and the result, successful failed. Also with these columns here, you can sort by uh, the, the actual result. So if we want to sort by the result here, we can uh, just highlight that column, grab it with the mouse and drag it up the top to the grey bar. And that way we can sort between failed and successful transactions. So that's quite handy if you want to sort out the different transaction types you've got. 
So if we have a look at the individual transactions in the report, we can actually drill down further on each transaction to get more information about it. So let's click on this one here. So here's the in-depth report on the individual transaction. We can see the cardholder's details, so the cardholder's name, the uh, abridged number and the expiry date, the type. Now we also have some custom information about the customer if you pass that to us when the transaction is processed. So you can see we've got first name, last name, email address, address, postcode and invoice description. Um, they're not required fields on the gateway, but if you did pass them to us, we would have them recorded within the transaction details. We can also see the response we got back from the bank. So this transaction was successful. Here's your unique eWay uh, transaction ID, the response text back from the bank and the authorization code as well. So that gives you a bit of information about each transaction and, and the result as well. We'll just go back to that main page. Also within this screen, we've got a few actions on each transaction. So we'll open up this drop down box. So the first option is viewing the transaction details, which was the screen that we just saw a second ago. Also from here we can refund transactions, so if we click on this option. So you might have a customer who for some reason didn't get their goods or has returned their, their goods. Um, whatever the reason, you can uh, actually refund them through this area. So we might have a transaction for 10 cents originally, but we might want to return 5 cents to that card. So you simply type the amount that you want to refund to the card, hit the button, confirm the transaction, and it's failed for reason 05 decline. So for some reason that card's, card hasn't gone through. Um, might be an issue with the card itself, uh, but usually they will go through successfully. Also on this account, uh, on this drop down, you can charge the credit card again. So you might want have a customer who ordered extra uh, goods. The shipping costs were more than you thought. You can simply charge the card without having to go back to the the customer and get the card details off them. You can also resend the email receipt. So if the customer didn't get it first time, you can send out uh, the brief email message that we send out on the successful uh, payment. We can also create a recurring payment schedule from each transaction as well. So you might have a customer who comes in, um, purchases one item, but then wants to uh, go on a recurring payment schedule for a membership or a, a subscription, something like that. You can simply hit the button and create that recurring schedule so they're billed automatically on a given date. And you can also print the transaction details if you want to have a hard copy as well. As far as uh, drilling down and exporting the details, you can uh, email the report to yourself or to others. So you might have a bookkeeper who needs to see this information or people throughout your business who also want to get the information. So here we've got the transaction report. Now it goes to the, the email address on the account by default, uh, but you can send to others. So you might want to send it to the accounts department or your support team. You can set your own subject, so today's report, and even have a description there as well. So getting your spelling right. Now, you can also determine what format you want to send that report in. So it can be PDF, Word, CSV, or Excel. So let's go ahead and send that. That will send the report off to the desired people so they can then view it through their email client. Now you might not want to email it, you just might want to download it to your own machine. So we've got an export function here as well. So we, we might want to um, export it to a PDF and then print it up, take it to our bank account, a bank manager or our accountant. So let's export that report now. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so So 
So you can see the PDF version of that report. So it's in a nice format. It's got the summaries up the top again and the breakdown of each individual transaction uh, within that report. So you can then go ahead and print it or, uh, or save it to file as needed. So they're the main, uh, main bits of functionality within the, the main reporting screen. Um, this is probably where you'll spend most of your time. Um, it's, I guess, where you'll find all the information about your transactions. We do have some uh, customer reports and settlement reports you can also access. So the settlement reports that you can access through here, these will actually show you the amounts that are settling directly to your bank account. The banks have a cutoff time of 6 p.m. each day. So anything processed after 6 p.m. will go on the next day settlement. So what this report does is actually tie in with the bank settlement times. So you can see for the total amount settled to the bank on each day, which transactions went into that settlement account, a uh, settlement amount. So that's really good for your accounts people as far as reconciling your e-way transactions and what's gone into your bank account. You can also schedule reports through here. So you might want uh, a daily update sent to your email address. Um, so rather than having to log in each day to your eWay uh, business centre, we will automatically send uh, an email with the report each day, and that can be sent at any time. We also a new feature we also have is customer reports. So these customer reports allows you to set your own format. So instead of having the set format that we see in the basic uh, transaction report with date, time, transaction number, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you can actually create your own uh, format. So if we have a look at this one here, so we can see we've got all the normal uh, columns, but we've also added the email, the time, and the IP address of the, the customer. So this allows you to determine what information you get back in your transaction report. Now you can edit those reports at any time. So we might want to take away the IP address and add in the first name of the customer. As you can see, it's changed, uh, changed the report. We've got all the functionality we had on the, on the normal transaction report as far as searching and filtering. Uh, the email still works, the export still works. Uh, it just really allows you to determine what information you get back in your report. So that's a really handy feature. The last section of the reports is our dashboards. Now the dashboards are really to give you a graphical representation of your, uh, your transaction history and give you a, a better insight into how your business is travelling. Uh, the reports are, are very good as far as breaking your payment history down, uh, but it's hard to get an overall idea of how your business is travelling, which the dashboards definitely give you. So the first one is a comparison from one, one date to another. So this might be handy for comparing um, you know, quarter by quarter, month by month, how you've uh, improved. You can also see a breakdown of the transactions uh, on a monthly basis. So for this account, they had a very good September. It's been pretty quiet the rest of the year. So we can also compare the settlements over time and uh, over the 30 days. We can also see where the payments are coming from in the world. So on this account in particular, we can see that most of the traffic is coming from the states. So this account might want to do more advertising in the states. We've got some traffic from Australia. The rest of the world is fairly quiet though, so we might want to con concentrate our efforts in those two countries. We can also see the split of domestic versus overseas transactions. As you can see, pretty much everything is going through overseas for this account. The last bit dashboard is um, comparing uh, time spans. So this is a gauge comparing last, last month to, to this month. The idea behind it is that every month you want to do better. So um, you can see that are you going to achieve that? Are you going to get close to beating the last month's transactions? And once again, a breakdown of your transactions over time on a monthly basis. So that's the report section. Like I said, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of power there. You'll see all the, all the payment history, you'll be able to drill down, uh, export that data, um, determine what data you pull back with your customer reports, and also get a, uh, I guess a, an overview of your, your business, how your business is travelling and where you can possibly improve as well.